As you can see from the title, in this part of the video, we're going to be discussing songwriting and how I start my projects. As you can see, I already have FL Studio opened. There are a couple of things that we need to discuss before we go into songwriting. As I've said on the introduction, people struggle mainly because they don't know where they're going. Most producers I know do not finish their projects. Most producers I know do not know how to start a project. The best way to know where to go and how to start is by having references. Find music that you enjoy, make a list and study it. Listen to how it is. If you do not know what you want to do, you'll never get to anywhere. You should always have a goal in mind when you're creating music. So once you understand that you need references, make sure to get yours. In this case, we're not going to use a specific reference. We're just going to use musicians as references. In this case, we can use Martin Garrix, we can use Brooks, and we can use Mike Williams. All those guys are creating amazing melodies, amazing results, and we're going to be following them. Okay. So let's open up FL Studio and let's plan everything out because there are some things that I need you to do before we start working. Okay. So I have FL Studio opened and one of the first things I suggest you use is click new from template. We're going to be using a minimal template that I really love. This template includes a delay and a reverb on separate send tracks. So I always like to start my projects with this, mainly because if you open your mixer, as you can see, you got your delay and your reverb on 100 and 101 mixer channels. This way, we're going to make everything, it's going to make everything easier for us and also cleaner at, at the end. Technically speaking, if you only use one or two reverbs for everything, the song is going to sound a little bit more glued together because every sound is going to be on the same space. And you want to create that. You want to create an atmosphere for the song. So we're not going to move anything from this yet, but so far, so good. We got everything done for that. My idea when creating a song is I want to be able to be as creative as I can without having to go into any technical crazy aspects of the song yet. I just want to open something where I can create a song. That's it. So what I usually do is open up a FL Keys simply because it's the easiest thing to, to open. Simple. No need to add any effects to it, nothing. All we have to do in the beginning is worry about melodies and that's it, okay? So when I open F when I open my piano roll, again, like I've said, if you do not have, if you do not have a purpose, you're never going to know what to do with this piano, okay? But we do have a purpose and we understand that Future House and Future Bounce usually works with very limited scales. Most of Future House and Future Bounce songs are created on natural minor. Some of them are created on harmonic minor, the ones I make, and some of them are creating on Lydian and Dorian. So it's, it's, it's a game of major, minor, major, minor kind of thing. If you want to create good melodies, that's what you should be working with. So in this case, we are going to be using natural minor. And thanks to FL Studio, it's actually very easy to create something with limited notes as we can. If you go on this little corner and then click on view, you can actually highlight a scale. I've actually, if you right click on natural minor, you can select or deselect whatever scale you want. When you click on that, it actually highlights everything on the screen for you. Everything that appears uh, blacked out are notes that you should not use. So in this case, we're going to use natural minor and we're going to use an A because A feels a little bit better than, than B, but you can use any note that you want. So now, so now that we have the scale highlighted, how do we start? Usually what I think, usually to me, the best way to start is by creating a bass line. Um, cause bass lines work as a bass, really. It, it's, it's as simple as that. So let's play the root note and let's see what we feel. Huh? It's very easy to create a chord progression with this, like dun dun dun.
can we can we keep on going with this? Yes, we can. We can actually turn this into chords. And by create, in order to create chords, I usually add another octave up. In order to duplicate something, all you have to do is click Command or Control, highlight everything, click on Shift, and then when you click Shift, you can drag a copy or a clone of what you're moving. So now we have a clone there. We can put seven notes up. Now, this is basically sounding like chords. We can add another chord here. This one should be minor. Why? Because we cannot have it major. This is natural minor, as you can see on the screen. We are being limited by all those black notes. So let's put this. We can put this one here. We can put another one here. Now, let's play this. This sounds pretty good. Um, we can make it even more complex by just putting that one below the top note down. Does it sound good? Yeah. And we can keep on going with this and create a melody on top of this, but I think it's not as special as it should. So we're going to try something different, right? So let's remove everything except the first, the first chords. Also, there's something very important. Always save your projects. Always. Make sure to go with file and save it. Remember to click Command S or Control S often. You never know. When you're creating music, you always should always have a backup. Okay? Go on File Settings and make sure to change your autosave to Frequently. Okay? Because this is going to autosave your project every single, every five minutes or before rescue operations. My maximum, I always put it 100. You can put more if you want, 133. Something like that. So now we're ready to keep on moving forward. We're doing all the songwriting. So let's put this at 126. I am no longer enjoying Future Bounce at 128. So let's do 126. Let's do something like dun, dun. We can remove the chords for now, but. Dun, dun. Uh, something extra that I really like working with is a men metronome. Activate the metronome with a cowbell and it sounds really good. Dun, 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 dun. We can do something like this. This uh, melody sort of reminds me of my water belt uh, track. We can do this and then we can clone this again, control to highlight everything, then shift to clone. Da -da -da -da. We can do something like that. Maybe this will work, maybe this won't. But this is all about trying stuff. All right, now let's just leave it at where it is. Now, again, remember that everything is highlighted. So creating chords with this is very easy. Let's create some chords by duplicating this one octave higher and let's create the chords. So for this one, it's gonna be mi minor. This one's gonna be major. And this one's gonna be minor as well. So let's put a minor thing here. This is sounding pretty good. I think this sounds much better than the other chord progression that we were working on. Let's actually duplicate this just to, make, just to make it even faster. Let's duplicate everything and let's make it minor. 
Everything is going to be minor, but some of these notes are not minor. So what I suggest you do is click Command and then click on this note and it's going to select everything. Now from this, you can click Shift and move up or down on your arrows. And with this, you can move it to where you ex where you know it will sound good. So let's click on this other note that is on the black line and let's move it up because this should be major. Now we can listen to this. Right now we only have the fifths. So let's add more. Why not? Let's add all these. Uh, we can add it here where we have this. So this is how it, should, how, how it sounds with all the chords pretty much done. We can, we can do this sort of change. Something like this. It sounds a little bit weird, but we can put this like this and let's see. Eh, that sounds too cheesy, so let's just move the bass. Maybe that will sound good. It, this chord, I don't even know what it is. It's maybe a sort of like, I don't know. Let's, let's just play it again. Um, we can put some of the higher notes down to make it a little bit more uh, complex, more of an inverted chord. Uh, yeah, more of an inverted chord. This sounds pretty good. Now, usually what I do is, I know I'm going to be using this for the break. So I'm going to drop this on the break. Usually breaks have a sort of like reverse thing and then it starts. Let's put this twice. Then we're going to have a sort of, I'm actually thinking on how everything is going to be working in my mind. But um, yeah, usually your song starts with chords. Then we're going to create a sort of lead or arp here that's going to create more attention. Or this can be even just build up. Uh, nowadays, songs are not that complicated. Songs are super short. So let's do that. This is going to be the build up. Then we duplicate that. And then in the drop, we're going to be using this again. We can add a time marker. This is going to be where the drop comes in. This is going to be the buildup. Time markers, let's add one. This is going to be the buildup. For now, this is we're basically working on song writing slash structure, right? Uh, we can create, we can call this break or first verse, whatever you, whatever you like. Drop can be two bars though. And then it's everything will drop and can repeat again. You can repeat again. You have a sort of stop here. And then it starts again. Now for this second part of the, for this second break, we can add this second break. We can add a longer intro or a longer now for this second part, we can add something longer, right? We can add a another part in pattern. In this part, we can basically add a sort of like, uh, we can put all the drop elements just like Martin Garrix and said, and then create a simpler thing here, add the buildup here. Let's add another marker. My computer is not paying attention, but let's add another marker here. We're going to add second build up, build up, and then we're going to have the drop over here again, duplicating it twice. Right now, you're, you might be thinking, oh, why are we doing this? But it's necessary. I think it's drop two. 
And then we got the outro. The outro is usually just like this, or we can just leave it like this. Just say a radio edit of the song. Now, um, we need to add a melody. And if we add a melody, this is pretty much done. <laughs> really. The songwriting part is pretty much done. So let's make this another. So now let's duplicate this pattern so we can create a melody on top of this. Um, make unique. And now we're going to play around using the notes in the scale. That's why using a scale makes it easier for you because you have a guideline. If you have a guideline, it's easier to follow the path. Okay. Now, let's play around with a sort of like... Uh, volume is a little bit high on everything. So let's put it down. Uh, highlight everything and then right click and create a lower velocity for everything because we want the, the melody to stand out in this part. You can do anything really, as long as it's on the scale. So we're going to do something simple. Oh, we can put the volume up again for this. Well, that sounds pretty good, but it's not as special. So something that I like doing is duplicating or actually cloning the notes on here, then Duplicating it, selecting everything. Let me remove the melody. Selecting the chords, selecting all of the chords, and then duplicating this chords one octave higher or two higher, whatever it is, one or two. Oh. What I like doing, like I've said, is selecting everything, and duplicating it one octave higher because when you go into the melody now you're going to have ghost melodies now right so now with this we can create a melody based on the chords so it's something like something When creating a melody, it's actually not that complicated. Most of the times is trial and error and understanding what, what emotions your chords are giving you. So to me, these chords are like hopeful. So let's create a melody that sounds hopeful. If I create a melody that starts sounding sad or slow, then I remove it completely. So. I feel like this would be too much. So let's dun 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 dun. That sounds pretty good for the beginning. Then we can play around with even the rhythm of this with the FL keys. Uh yeah, we can play with the rhythm. Actually, we're playing both of these, so. Let's uh, mute this one. That's why the volume was never going down. Shout out to Jay for being so smart. <laughs> Let's put some of these notes up now because we need them. It was duplicated. That's why it was so, so crazy. My bad. So now we can put the same rhythm as this. Dun, 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 dun. Can do something like this. Dun, da, 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 dun, dun. Put like a three. Dun, da, 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 dun, dun. We can play around with this, with this right now. Right now is all about songwriting. We don't care what sounds we use. We don't care how good it sounds. We just care about melodies. We don't even working with 
uh, sh- we're not even working with any crazy um, shuffling or anything. We do not even have any swing yet, so. Uh, I don't know what to do here. Dun, 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 okay. Dun, 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 let's work on this rhythm. Dun, dun, dun. It should be something like this. No. Something like this. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Again, if in order to select everything, make sure to click Control or Command, and then you just simply, simply drag, select it, and then if you want to clone it, click on Shift, and then move it, okay? Let's actually put the same rhythm, dun 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 dun. All right, now, that's, that sounds really good, but we still need to work on the melody. One of the best techniques to make a melody memorable, a melody that is catchy, is first, make sure that you can sing it. Make sure that it's not too fast. Right now, yeah, I'm adding this. This three notes are extremely fast, but they're not being played all the time. It's not like the whole song is... Because then it's extremely hard to follow. You can add simple details here and there, but make sure to make everything followable, easy to follow. Now let's listen to this. So far, so good. Everything is followable. Now, what rhythm should I add to everything else? One of the best techniques to make a song catchy or a melody catchy is to keep a standard, is to limit yourself. So the rhythm that I've created for this two bars are, is the rhythm that I'm going to use for every single part of the drop. Recreate this. It's going to take some time, so let's do it. Let's use the same first note. Now this other note is going to... Now for this part, I'm going to recreate the... Again. So let's clone this. Let's put it here. Now, if, if I'm creating a melody, I want to make sure that I add structure to it. Why? Because our brain is so stupid that when you give it something that it's craving for, it's going to enjoy it. So that's the way to create a catchy melody. Give it something it wants. Okay? So how do we give it something it wants? In this case, for example, we got this part, right? That part, our brain, if we keep on listening to the song, it's going to ask us to come back to that part. Like it's, it's craving to go back to that part. So we can give it that part with a twist. In this case, for example, this part sounds exactly like the first part. But it's not exactly the same thing. But So not only are you giving them what they want, but you're surprising them with something different. So let's keep on playing with the melody. Let's keep on playing with the melody. We're going to follow the notes of the chords right now because we've created some good rhythm. So... Dun, 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 dun. Oh, 
Okay, now listen to this. It's it's sounding very good. Now we can basically copy this. Trust me, we can copy this, put it here, and it might sound good. Is it gonna sound good? I don't know, but it's keeping the same structure, which might lead us to finding a good melody. Let's put it here. Let's see how this sounds. It might sound really bad, but let's see if structure actually makes sense. It kind of does, but it's not as exciting. So let's put it up. Let's put this down. So if we leave this here, for example, since this note and this note are not the same, it's gonna feel a little bit weird. So. If we add that, it's gonna sound like an ending melody. So let's duplicate this part. Let's duplicate this part. Watch this. Duplicating is such a good uh, repeating, repeating special aspects of your melody is also another another great technique of creating catchy melodies. Okay, if we add the same rhythm here, because we don't have that yet, let's add this rhythm. Dun, 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 dun. Of course, we cannot repeat the exact same thing because it's just going to get too boring. Let's listen to this. Let's see how it sounds. Again, the same thing is going to sound too boring, so let's put it up. Dun, 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 dun. And instead of. Let's put it backwards. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. And now we can duplicate the whole melody again and just make a small twist at the end. So let's listen to this. Yeah, we pretty much have breaks. We can create a sort of like arp for this. And then build up. We got the build up. <laughs> oh, it's so energetic. If you add an end of the smile, you got it. End the job. Now for the transition, since I think this is still part of songwriting, we can add a sort of small melody that just adds transition. Uh, so let's play around with this actually. Let me open it up. If you want to cut something in your in your playlist, make sure to click shift, but it make sure it's the right shift. And then if you left click it or right click it, if you right click it, you remove everything from the smallest part or the smallest cell. And if you left click it, you simply split it. We don't want to only split it. We want to remove it completely. So make sure it's red and then it removes that small, that small tail. I'm actually like super detailed with what I do. So I don't like having like, unorganized things. Now, let's remove this part and let's create a transition, but melody transition. Um, okay, sounds pretty good. 
actually remove the sampler file, sampler guide. Okay, so then we can start again. Maybe we can do something. So. Just something simple. And then to the end. Eh, that sounds pretty good. Now everything is going to stop and start again. Maybe we can move the break to, to start exactly when this one ends. So it doesn't get us like long. Uh, now for this second part. We can add the melody in the drop and basically add a lead drop without any side chain. And maybe maybe that can sound good. Now it's gonna be the build up. Oh. Okay. Got this here. And then we're gonna come back to the slow thing. Now, we can add an ARP to the break. Let's do that. Let's do that. We can save. Again, remember to save with before you do anything. Let's add something called ARP. And then we're going to be creating a... Yeah, we got the ARP here. We can put it in here. And for the ARP, we can... Yeah, you just use the same thing. Simple. Use the notes in the scale. This one, they sound cheesy, so I do not like them. <laughs> this sounds like Coldplay. We're creating a melody that sort of repeats. Wait, now this note isn't part of the scale. But does it work? Yeah, it does work. So let's listen to this. So far, so good. I think ARPs and stuff like that can be very helpful. We can repeat this over and over again. 
And for the buildup, actually, I really like adding the drop melody in the background. So we know that we're going to do that. So let's add it now. Watch this. We can actually clone this. We can repeat this for a while and add this as the I mean, I don't even know. We can actually copy this uh, chord progression. Songwriting is all about trying stuff. In this case, I am actually wasting some of the time because I don't know what I really want to do with this. So usually that's okay as well. It, it's, sometimes it's okay. Um, and sometimes the idea comes as you go. But what I really suggest you guys and the reason why we started off with songwriting is because we want to have as much songwriting as but as done we want to have ready as much songwriting as possible before we go and try to add mixing and kicks and everything to it so so far so good we have so much we have done so much and if we you give if you give this template to someone who knows how to make music I can assure you they will be able to finish the song really fast. Now, if you want to go the easier route, you can copy the chords, go into the ARP, copy the chords in the ARP, and then there's magical tools within FL Studio where you can go in tools and then arpeggiate, arpeggiate. So let's listen to this. Sounds good. What if we put it a range two? What if we change the the sync to block or to chord? It changes everything. What if we flip it? What if we alternate it? Uh, you can also change the time here. I think this sounds pretty cool. I think this can have a sort of special thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like this. Okay, this sparks something in me. Now, we can add something, some, some cut here. Wow, okay, so this is what songwriting is all about. It's trying stuff, all creative. We're not doing anything technical yet, and it's sounding so good. So. We can add the chords there. We had this change here, which I didn't remember. So now let's, this is gonna be repeating a sort of ARP. And I think it's going to make a ton of sense when we add different sounds to it, something more futuristic. I'm thinking, we're gonna create all the sound design and everything ourselves. So imagine this starting and then claps. This is gonna sound so good, bro. So good. Now, for the buildup. Do 
we want a dun 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 dun? I don't think we do. Okay, so I'm thinking of what it should sound like. Right now, we are just duplicating. We're only gonna leave like a small space. got this now for the second breakdown it's going to have both combined from the beginning it's gonna have the drop sounds and then it's gonna back it's gonna go back to a very simple just just uh, chords just chords just chords the recording yes just chords just chords and we can have the same type of uh, build up on this side just like this we can add this but we can add this part here but extremely low passed like low pass, blah, blah, blah. And then we can have that as well. Let's put this like this. Just so it's not so empty melodically. And we can repeat the drop. And that's basically it. Yeah, we basically have the songwriting part and the structure. Now it's all about working on that sound design and choosing the right sounds, working on transitions.